So we are back with another episode of upcoming mods for fall wait does that say meds i actually don't why does that say meds either way this is a series where i show you guys currently work in progress mods for fallout 4. we are approaching that legendary episode 200 where i will finally change the description i know many of you guys have been asking about it and it's coming you know what on this one that's pretty much it i got a lot of cool stuff to show you so let's just jump into it to start things off, we have the Predator Tactical Mask. This is a new work in progress mod by NewerMind43, who's been releasing a ton of content over the past few months. And of course, what this is going to be is the mask from Predator. All those series of movies, you have Alien vs. Predator, and then just the Predator movies, of which they're actually making a new one. These shots of it are, of course, quite work in progress, but the Predator mask, I think, is a great fit in Fallout 4. Although obviously not being the most lore-friendly thing in the world, I personally think the mask would look great with some of the different armor combinations. There's actually another one floating around that has some screenshots posted of it. Again, to be clear, this is a totally different mod. I believe it's using ripped assets of some sort. And as you can see, it looks pretty freaking cool. That's definitely something that I'm welcoming of and I would love to see more of. So hopefully Newer Mind will implement something similar to this. His mask has a little bit of a different style, but as long as we get those long hairy things on it, I think it'll be an awesome addition to the game. So we have a work in progress DL44 for Fallout 4. So right off the bat, this probably looks really familiar to you. It's going to look really familiar to a lot of people. Even if you know very little about Star Wars, you probably know this is going to be Han Solo's blaster. We have quite a few different Star Wars mods for Fallout 4 at this point. There's definitely a good selection, but this of course being one of the most iconic ones will make a really good addition to that list. There's not a ton to show just yet, but I did want to keep you guys up to date that this is coming and hopefully we'll have some cool progress picks to show you in the coming episodes. Alright, so maybe this was made as a joke, but I personally love this one and I would love to see it in game. I would definitely download this mod and use it. The Tactical Banana is going to be a bunch of attachments using a banana as a base. So first glance, you might be like, oh, that's super silly, but there's a lot of practicality here. Obviously, with the banana, you have a lot of different attachment points because it's so malleable and you can kind of just stick things inside of it. You could have attachments on the top, the sides, the bottom, as you can see highlighted here. And in addition, as long as it's a decent conductor, this would provide itself as a very decent laser weapon. You can run some wires through the middle or even a barrel through the middle and the banana may melt a little bit, but as long as the outer skin does remain intact, it should be able to mostly hold its form, if not just to slump a little. All around, I really do love the design of this one. I hope we can see more of it. It's actually listed as Tactical Banana 2, implying there was an initial image, but I was unable to find that one, unfortunately. So we have a bunch of workshop items of a particular theme. This is actually coming to an existing mod known as the Left Field Diner, sponsored by Nuka-Cola. I don't know what you'd call this style, it almost is like a disco, but it has that like church glass you see where it's all little pieces put together. But either way, it is quite different. Again, this is coming as an update to an existing mod. I'll show you some images of the regular mod right now because there's quite a few little cute things in it that I definitely think would be appealing to a number of you. And of course, it is getting a future update, so I would say it's a great time to download or at least follow or track on Nexus so you can get it when the update does come out. So we have another mod that is already out. There's always this weird dynamic when people release mods on YouTube videos or in just non-traditional locations. Technically, if you're a PC user, you could download the M60 from War Daddy right now. But due to the limitations in its availability, I hesitate to put it in any of the main series, so I shove it into upcoming mods because maybe eventually we'll see it on a mainstream release with Nexus and Bethesda.net. But at least for now, it looks really freaking cool. War Daddy has a full video, I'm only showing you a clip of his, and I will have a link to that down below so you can check it out. Fallout 4 has a pretty big machine gun problem, and this will definitely be a good step towards addressing that. So we got some more retextures from D. Polari. First and foremost, we do have the Solar Cannon. This is the recent release in Creation Club. It was a pretty cool weapon. It wasn't my favorite thing in the world, but it definitely was quite high quality. But of course, with these new textures, it seems like it'll be even higher quality. And in particular, the second image on this one, I think just really blows me away. It looks really good, and I'm excited to see some more in-game screenshots of this. D. Polari's been working on a ton recently, and even beyond that, I really want to commend him because he's been getting a ton released. A lot of mod authors will release work in progress pictures, but this guy in particular is also releasing fully functioning mods. In addition to the solar cannon, we also have the double barrel HD. I've said it a ton of times in the series, but I love vanilla weapon retextures and reanimations, things like that. As you play through Fallout 4 right now, the double barrel is probably pretty forgettable. You've used it countless times, you've had it used against you countless times, but after downloading a retexture like this, you may pick it up and be like, oh wow, that actually looks pretty cool, and find yourself using an otherwise forgettable weapon yet again. And speaking of Fallout 4's MG problem, we also do have the New Vegas LMG. 
This is of course coming from New Vegas. It's going to be a work in progress by FlipDark95 and it is listed as a later alternative to the assault rifle. It's actually going to spawn on the leveled list of the Gunners, Brotherhood, Super Mutants, and some of the Raider gangs. And like I kind of touched on before, guns like this are going to be a very welcome addition to the leveled list of Fallout 4, even to just flesh things out. So on the other side of the block, we have an update to the work in progress pictures from Millennia. I did show you recently that it is working on the Fallout 3 10mm pistol, and we get a few more looks at that, some featuring other attachments that look really freaking cool, and just some showing the level of fidelity and detail that this is bringing to the table. This one in particular will hopefully bring a rush of nostalgia back to everyone. I feel like Fallout 3 was a lot of our entry into the franchise, or at least the franchise as we know it today, and even though others have recreated this one, Millennia is pretty much at the top notch as far as as quality goes, so it's definitely not going to be one you want to ignore. So we have another update to Wars, and it's been quite a while since I've actually shown you updates from this mod, this time we are looking at the SA-80. Wars if you don't know stands for the Weapon Edition and Replacement Suite, and what it's aiming to do is actually take a lot of the boring and otherwise kind of ugly vanilla weapons in Fallout 4 and replace them with more interesting alternatives. This entry to the mod in particular is notable because of how many different customization options it's going to feature. In the background, you're seeing a bunch of them. Some of them are iterations that appeared in the real world. Some of them actually appeared in previous Fallouts, Fallout 2 most notably. And in addition, even some of them are actual prototypes from the real world. All around, I love that they're taking advantage of Fallout 4's weapon customization system. We've actually seen animations for this in the past, so I'll put that little video on screen right now. And all around, this mod as a whole is really stacking up to have a ton of content and all of it looking really amazing. Amazing. So we have another update coming to an existing mod, that with the Militarized Minutemen uniform add-on. This mod as of right now adds in a bunch of patches as well as different camo options, but soon it's actually getting some different pouches to add on to your Militarized Minutemen uniforms. So as you can see here, you have a few different options as far as the pouches are going to go, with the Mag Dump pouch as well as the Canteen add-on. I really like this because the Militarized Minutemen really provides itself as a great platform where you can customize those armors quite extensively, but getting some of these minor add-ons, I think it's going to be something a lot of people really enjoy and a mod that is going to get downloaded increasingly. Another camo is also coming in this update and again this is a mod you could download right now, the Militarized Minutemen uniform patches and insignia add-on. In its current state what it largely does is give you a bunch of different patches you can add on as well as you could actually put most real world insignia on the armors and it features a bunch of different texture customizations but again in the future we're getting pouches as well as some more texture customization options. And last but not least, we have what is probably going to be one of my favorite mods I've seen in a long time. And after reading some of those comment sections, it seems like something that a lot of you guys could benefit from. This is going to be called the Kaiser Model Special, and unlike most other weapons in Fallout 4, instead of this barrel pointing outward, it's actually going to point inward. So as you can tell by some of these screenshots, as you hold this revolver, it's actually going to face you. And although the pictures look awesome, definitely very high quality, if not the highest quality, there's a little bit more. We also have a few videos of this thing in progress and the aim down sight animation in addition to the actual functionality on other NPCs just looks beautiful. I'm really oh, excited for this mod. A few features I would actually love to see with it is if you could actually pickpocket this into enemy NPCs, that would be awesome. If there was actually like a healing functionality, like this was a way to give you a super stim pack or something, or maybe some other kind of syringes you could load into this that have a special caliber type to fit in a revolver that will give you different buffs or debuffs. In addition to the standard bullets, you should be able to load into this all around. I personally think it looks absolutely amazing. I'm very excited for this one. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video, but before we end things off, I actually want to share today's psychology fun fact of the day. It's actually one I've kind of talked about in the past, but not with new insight. So yesterday I was at this food truck festival where it's like a bunch of food trucks in a parking lot you have to pay to get in and you can buy stuff from all the food trucks. It was hot and of course a lot of people were drinking, probably dehydrated and eating fairly unhealthy food. And of course that could lead to a number of different problems. Well, somebody had a problem. Somebody went from the standing position to the on the floor very quickly and shaking position. I don't know exactly what happened, whether it was just fainting, a seizure, something along those lines though. It honestly didn't hit me until after the fact, but I had a hardcore experience of the bystander effect. So what that's going to be is the more people that are present in a social situation, such as where I was, a little festival, the less likely any individual will be to respond to that incident. 
So according to this effect, hypothetically, let's say someone faints, if there's 10 people, the likelihood of someone stepping up and running up to help that person is way more likely than if there were 100 people around. This is due to the mentality that, well, someone else will help her, I don't have to. And yesterday at this food truck festival, after this person fainted or see whatever happened, since there were so many people around and I was fairly far away, I felt no obligation to go up and help, which was definitely the wrong thing to do. Upon reflection, even just taking a few steps closer to make sure everything was okay is what I should have done. And even with my knowledge of this, even knowing what the bystander effect was, in the moment it didn't really hit me that it was happening. It was only a few minutes later upon reflection that I was like, oh wow, that, that was a thing. The bystander effect is very real and even with knowledge of it, you can't entirely counteract it. But either way, I figure me sharing it in this video can only increase the likelihood of someone not experiencing it or someone overcoming it in the future. Either way, it's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you all next time. Later.